Hey, I'm Melanie Kingett from The Absolute Recap, and today's video will recap part two of my predicted answers for the 2023 AP Biology free response questions. If you missed part one, click here to watch a recap of long response questions one and two. Don't forget, these are just my interpretations of the answers. I don't have any insider scoop or preview of the official scoring guides. And it's totally possible that you wrote something different and still earned points. I've linked these College Board released FRQs in the description below so you can follow along. Question three through six are the short FRQs and worth four points each. Let's zoom in. Question three is scientific investigation and was about fish embryos of a keystone species that developed at different temperatures and CO2 levels. And once again, you can answer part A without the prompt. Increased biodiversity increases ecosystem resilience in a changing environment because there are more community interactions and occupied niches. For part B, the scientists selected these temperatures and CO2 levels as a minimum because they represent the optimal developmental conditions and serve as a positive control. In C, there are two possible null hypotheses. Either increase in temperature or increase in CO2 levels has no effect on sand land survival rate. You only need to state one of the two to earn the point. And part D, disruption of a keystone species will have a large impact on all trophic levels due to predator-prey interactions. Question four is conceptual analysis and the prompt provided a diagram of cyclic and non-cyclic electron flow in photosynthesis. You guessed it, part A doesn't need the prompt to answer. Chlorophyll absorbs energy from light, raising electrons to a higher energy level. In B, less available NADP plus means that more electrons from ferrodoxin will go into the cytochrome complex of the cyclic pathway. For C and D, the rate of biomass accumulation will decrease since the mutation blocks the Calvin cycle from producing sugars. This is because the Calvin cycle requires both NADPH and ATP synthesized from the electron flow pathways that move through photosystem one. Question five is analyze a model or visual representation. It's cladogram time, specifically of ruminant families with specific morphological characteristics. For A, the fewer nucleotide differences, the more recently two organisms shared a common ancestor. In B, figure 1B was constructed using molecular data, which is more reliable than morphological data for predicting evolutionary relationships. For part C, you should have an X in two locations on the cladogram where characteristic one evolved, here and here. And D, Cervidae and Bovidae do not share a recent common ancestor, so any trait that they uniquely share probably evolve from similar selective pressures. Question six is analyze data, pesticides, bees, and what I believe is the first box and whisker plot for an AP Bio FRQ since the redesign. For part A, the RPS5 gene had the lowest medium CQ value when bees at different developmental stages were compared. For part B, the TBPAF gene has the lowest level of gene expression regardless of the variable. In C, the hypothesis is supported. When bees of different sexes were compared, TBPAF had the narrowest range of CQ values with medians that were roughly equivalent and had no overlap. These all indicate that TBPAF expression is least affected by sex and makes the best control. And lastly, question six, part D. Gene expression can vary from one cell type to another within the same bee due to different transcription factors from cell differentiation. To recap, the 2023 AP Biology FRQs were challenging, but followed a predictable pattern. The College Board has announced that the AP exam scores will be released starting July 5th, 2023. If you found this video helpful, spread the word about our page and the Absolute Recap. Click like, subscribe, and share with a friend, especially one who will be taking AP Bio next year. See you next recap.